Hello and welcome to another Magic the Gathering Draft video. It's Al here with you. This is How to Draft MTG. We're jumping into another Crimson Vow Premier Draft. I'm going to show you how I navigate the draft and uh, my reasoning for all the picks and plays in every game. Let's get into it here. We're going to start by looking at our rare, as we often do in Limited, especially in this set. And uh, our rare is a bit of a stinker, unfortunately. Uh, Kaya Geist Hunter, one white black, three loyalty, planeswalker, plus one. Creatures you control gain death touch, put a one one counter on one of them. Uh, minus two, make extra tokens if you're doing that. And minus six, make a million tokens. Uh, so this is pretty pretty much not a fit for any of the decks in uh, the format. It has a very low win rate, so we're going to pass on that. Um, my general strategy as of late has been to really bias towards red where possible. Uh, so in the past, I've said red, white, and black are sort of the, the spots you want to start in. I think red is really where we want to start uh, above and beyond the other two. Uh, one, because black is very hard to get into as of late. Uh, and two, because red is extremely deep and all of its color combinations work quite well. Uh, so I think I'd actually rather start in red and then followed by white, followed by black. Uh, not because of power level, but because of how, how cut black has been. So we're going to take Rending Flame out of that pack over Circle of Confinement. And this really leaves us wide open to do whatever we want here. We could be Red Black Vampires, which is a deck I, I like a lot. We could be Red Blue Spells, which is a deck I've been liking a lot lately. And uh, we could be red, white, aggressive. It could be red, green, kind of aggressive, whatever. So uh, we're, we're wide open here. Uh, looking at pick two, uh, we've got Bloodsworn Squire, Arm of Cathars is uncommon as you don't really want to play. Sanguine Statue, which kind of prices into black, red. And again, I, I've had trouble drafting black lately, so I don't really want to start there. Uh, the commons in this pack are all quite bad, with the exception of Ancestral Anger, which I think is the pick for us here. I've liked this card a whole lot as of late alongside Kessig Flame Breather. It's on color for us and Rending Flame goes great in a Kessig Flame Breather style deck. So the only other red card we would really consider taking is Belligerent Guest, which is a filler level card. If we were going to take a blue card, it'd probably be Scatter Thoughts or Chill of the Grave, but these are kind of... I don't want to say they're completely interchangeable, but they're of a similar power level, and blue cards tend to go quite late in the draft, so we don't need to spend high picks on them here. So, starting with a couple of good red cards, uh, if we see a Flame Breather, we're probably going to want to move in that direction. Uh, we have not as of yet. We've got Voldaren Epicure in this pack at the best red common available to us here. And we've got uh, Sigarda's Imprisonment, Panic Bystander as a couple of nice white commons. Uh, no black to really speak of. Gluttonous Guest is fine, but not a reason to move into black over Epicure. Uh, and, I mean, so the real question, uh, of course, nothing in blue, nothing in green. Splendid Reclamation doesn't really have an application in uh, in Limited. So the question is, do we want to take a card like Panic Bystander or Stigarda's Imprisonment to move towards white, or do we want to just stay on color and take Epicure? And for, for my money, I think we want to stay on color. The deeper we can get into red, because red is so deep, uh, we could be, you know, mono red by the end of pack one and open a sweet bomb rare in another color in pack two, and we have full uh, authority to just take that rather than starting to split our um, split our investment, if you will, between red and another color like white and end up uh, red white by the end of pack one. We're gonna have fewer options going into packs two and three. So we'll hope to see more red. We're seeing lacerate flesh, which is kind of on the borderline i mean we if we didn't have the rending flame we probably wouldn't even be in this spot but uh you, you like red uh, last rate flash when you don't have removal um i could see it taxidermist is also quite good um the blue cards are all medium pretty interchangeable with each other and these black cards are all pretty medium as well so I don't really have a problem with taking the flesh here. I can understand taking the taxidermist as pick four taxidermist is maybe a green signal. Uh, I think it's close. Maybe if you disagree, I, I, I would sort of respect that opinion for sure because taxidermist is really good, <clears throat> but red is really good and staying one color is really good as well. So I, th I think that pick was pretty close. Okay. And now we're uh, in a pack here. We're just, we just don't really have any red cards. We're, terribly interested in fearful villager is is just the definition of a filler card it's actually like pretty good it plays pretty well but like i don't know if we need to spend uh this pick on it uh, there's not really much else going on in this pack though we, we would take like a heron of hope to move into white i do like heron quite a bit 
And that's pretty much it. I mean, Edgar's Awakening is fine if we end up with a bunch of blood, which we could. Bots want us to take Heron. I'll take a Heron. I feel like Villager just gets cut often enough that we'd, we're fine um, passing up on it here. And pick six. Still not seeing any black. Um, green, not so much either. I mean, Crawling Infestation is cool, but it's not a deck that really comes together all that often. The green cards we want to be seeing are like the 6 mana 6-6 six, six Flourishing Hunter uh, or... You know, the good on commons, uh, like if this was a dormant grove, we'd be maybe interested in it. Uh, but as as it stands, uh, it doesn't look like green's flowing. It looks like blue is, is flowing. Blue is just not that, all that powerful. Um, but like I've said, alongside red, it can be quite good. So we're just going to keep getting deep into red. And if we see cards of other colors that pull us, uh, we'll, we'll jump on them. But until then, there's not really a reason in my mind to move off of red. Um all right, and uh, pretty pretty well a blank pack here. Like I said, I have liked blue-red spells a fair bit, and the only card that is even close to playable, in my opinion, is Scattered Thoughts. I mean, you could make an argument for Rural Recruit, but uh, the red-green deck wants to have better four drops than this. Uh, and, you know, this is like a, a last pick kind of card. So, And again, we want to be in green for the right reasons, and we have not seen those yet. So we're going to take a scattered thoughts here, see if we can move maybe in blue-red. We really need the Flame Breathers, though, in order for that deck to work. So, And we haven't seen any yet. So um, we're going to be a little bit uh, trepidatious, if that's the right word, of diving all in on that. Uh, but again, just a pack with, with very little power level in it. Mind Leech Ghoul's not really a reason to want to be black. Uh, Pyre Spawn's not really playable. So I think we just pick up a Scythe in Essence here. Uh, I like Mulch a reasonable amount, I guess, if you're in some kind of green mill strategy, but we're, we're not really there. Okay, and here is, a, I would say, a pretty substantial signal for us. The Panicked Bystander comes all the way around, along with Drogskull Infantry. Uh, and I'm, I'm blanking on exactly what was in this pack. This was our first pack. So Kaio was in the pack. Obviously, somebody took that for the gems, uh, or maybe they're trying to build around it. I don't think there was any other good white in this pack. There might have been an imprisonment, but uh, we'll take Panicked Bystander here. Uh, even if we don't end up being able to activate the black side, a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two that gains you some life and then turns into a 3-5 is, is pretty darn powerful. So so I'm going to consider that a, a pretty light, I don't know, a medium white signal. I mean, we've seen some white cards come by, um, and we want to identify what color is being passed to us in... Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> pack uh, one so that we can sort of capitalize that on that on in uh, pack three but see weirdly we're not really seeing any more white so uh, could have been a bit of a fluke there but we'll, we'll keep in mind a uh, bunch of nothing here I feel like aim for the head could be okay if we end up black red massive mites also pretty nice just haven't really been seeing the green flow pick up a chill here we, there's no reason we would want double aim for the head. And again, we haven't been seeing the green, so I, I don't think we want the wolf, although the wolf is not bad in that deck. And last pick, Crawling Infestation. Kind of makes sense to me. Okay, so we're deep on red. We've got a little bit of blue. We've got a little bit of white. So we can sort of take our pick of which direction we want to go based on what we see uh, in the coming picks here. So send in pack leader. It is good, I think, if you're already in red-green. Uh, we're not, so I think we're going to pass on it. <clears throat> Distracting Geist hasn't been all that exciting either. Uh, it, does, it does a thing, but not, uh, not super well. So in this situation, we're sort of pivoting on red. We just want to sort of take red cards and, and, uh, and only pick you know, cards of, of other colors we're considering if they're really excellent. And I don't know if like Fierce Retribution quite, get, quite gets there over just taking another Lacerate Flesh. Um, Falkrath Celebrants I've found comes around late, so I generally don't spend high picks on it, but it is a very good card, and if that does, if that does change, uh, then I may have to adjust the pick order on that one. We could also take Hungry Ridge Wolf, as we just kind of need, uh, a three drop. Whoa, some green here. There's Dormant Grove. Cemetery Prowler, I think, is, like, fine. It's like, it, it's, it can be, it can be annoying, uh, for your opponent, if they're trying to do graveyard stuff, it just doesn't come up all that often. Double green's kind of tough, but Dormant Grove is just excellent and is very, very tempting here. 
Um, but I think we just take Flame Blessed Bolt. I know I'm being kind of boring here, but like, this is the best common in the set. We know we're red. We don't know that we're green. If we take Dormant Grove and start trying to build a green uh, red deck and then get cut in pack three because we didn't see any green in pack three, we're, we're going to have a train wreck situation. So um, if we had been seeing green in pack one, I would be over the moon to see this and just go for it. But I think, uh, I think here we just sort of stay the course, get deep into red, uh, really cross our fingers. I would love to see some flame breathers at some point, but I think people might be hip to that uh, that strategy now, which is unfortunate because it's very fun um, when you can get it to go. So we'll take Angelic Quartermaster here. So this is an example of a great uncommon that we're actually excited to, to take. Um, because we have seen some white in pack one, uh, we can sort of expect to see some more in pack three. There's no good red card here that makes us just want to stay red. Uh, so this is just the perfect example of where we want to take a card like Quartermaster. We'll have a look at our curve. And uh, to maximize a card like this, we want to have lots of early drops. And we do not have those just yet. So I'm going to be on the lookout for things like um, uh, the 2-mana two 2-1, two uh, more of these Panic Bystanders, Traveling Minister is a good one. So we're seeing a few of these cards right here. Uh, and I think we'll take the Minister. This has just been an excellent card in any white deck. Uh, and, and I like it just fine right here. Markov Purifier in the pack, but uh, pretty unlikely we're going to be able to splash for it. Not really seeing any strong red cards. Uh, so again, makes it makes it kind of an easy, easy decision here. And I do think the Minister is slightly better than the Bystander. This card just really overperforms when it's on the battlefield. So we'll take that here. And continuing on, we got an alluring suitor, uh, which is a top red uncommon. So we'll just snap that up. We've got a lot of removal already. Last rate flesh, rending flame, uh, bolt, because we've been prioritizing it. So we don't need to spend this pick on Sigarda's imprisonment. Although if, if the alluring suitor wasn't here, I, I imagine we'd be taking it. Uh, nothing really to speak of in the other colors. Skulk and Killer is maybe one of the worst cards I've ever seen, <laughs> and uh, Dawn Heart Guy is not really that good, and these blue cards are pretty bad, and these red cards are pretty bad, so uh, yeah, easy alluring suitor. And moving forward, yeah, I think I think we're just moving into white here. We've, we're deep enough on red, and we're seeing good white cards come to us that I think we just sort of slide into red-white. Not a top archetype necessarily by any means but the archetypes are like fairly balanced in this set so if you could just find yourself in a color pair with good card quality uh i think you're you've done a, you've done well in your draft you know and then you just sort of let the let the rng take it from there uh if you're gonna face down um you know bombs or what have you you just try to get on board and, and win before your opponents can cast them uh, Droxwell Infantry, solid card, 2 mana 2-2, two, two, has applications in the late game. It's really good with Heron, because you can suit up uh, Heron with it, you can suit up Kylie Ancestor with it, uh, so this card just plays really well. Fleeting Spirit looks like a really good card, and I think it's just like an okay card. Um, it's it, it looks a lot like the 3-1 uh, three, uh, three for 2 that uh, from the core set, that when it, uh, you could discard a card to make it indestructible. And that card does not do that. It uh, it blinks. So if you get yourself into combat and you have to blink it, you're just down a card. Uh, yeah, we'll take Shield Basher here. We need fours. I don't. I'm not a fan of uh, four mana, two toughness creatures in this set because Bolt exists. But if you're playing against a non-red deck, they can actually have a hard time dealing with this card. So I've I've, I've gained a little bit of respect for it, but I'm certainly not looking to include it in in my decks but if there's a hole in the four slot and we can put it in then we will we'll just take a two drop here we need twos to make the quartermaster functional and uh we've got three cards we could actually take out of this pack which is a good sign that means we're in the right colors uh trainee is fine sure strike is i think the card we actually want because we don't have a combat trick yet and we're going to be getting into combat with a lot of these creatures and wedding invitation is just a card you can include in almost any deck and it wor works quite well uh it'll it'll draw you a card deal a few points of damage and sometimes gain you some life which is which is pretty dope uh here we'll take end the festivities i could see running one of these if you have enough blood to pitch it when it's not good um we'll take a nurturing presence here although we're not looking to play it and supernatural rescue is 
maybe worse than Skulking Killer. So we'll take Skulking Killer for the collection progress, and we'll take Daybreak Combatants to fill our three. So the deck is not excellent yet, but uh, okay. Now now we're seeing the Flame Breathers. Unfortunately, we didn't get there on the Flame Breathers. Dollhouse of Horrors. Um, five mana doesn't. Doesn't really... Well, I guess if you play it on 6, it does something right away. It gains haste. Hmm. We don't have a lot of late-game stuff to do yet. Uh, but we do have a Quartermaster, which will which will get us there. I just feel like we're pretty aggressive, and I don't know that this card really fits. We never want to see this in our opening hand. Uh, it's really only going to be good in like a board stall situation late in the game, which we're, we're going to hope to not be in. So I think, I think we either take the Flame Breather or the Bolt here. And given we only have, uh, we've got seven instants and sorceries, I could see taking the Flame Breather, but Bolt is so good that we probably should just take Bolt. But Flame Breather is really good. It's way better than I thought it was. Uh, it's really hard to kill because it doesn't die to Bolt. <laughs> and it doesn't die to, like, Fierce Retribution or um, the White Deal 2. It doesn't care about Chill of the Grave because it doesn't have to attack until it damage your opponents. So it actually, like, gets around a lot of... Uh, the removal in the set, and also can block uh, whilst dealing damage. And if you've got your deck built the right way, then you know you're casting your spells and and drawing towards your your better cards and hopefully your bombs and stuff. And it, it can be really really nice. I've had a lot of fun with that card recently. Uh, but we'll just take Markov Walter here. It's double on color and it's very powerful for this particular deck. Okay, how many vampires do we have? Three. So Vampire's Vengeance is going to kill a fair amount of our own stuff, which which is not great. But the card is very powerful. Um, <clears throat> Biolume Egg is really, really good. This is worth taking at any uh, early stage of the draft. Because uh, then you could just pick up any exploiter. And it doesn't even matter if the exploiter's any good. Because all you really care about is sacking the egg. <laughs> so uh, keep your eyes open for this one. We can't play it because we're, we're white-red at this point. But uh, I, I've had success with this in any deck that's blue. Particularly in blue red, you can pick up the uh, repository scab to get back uh, instances of sorceries, and get, if you get to sack the egg and get back a sweet spell, it can be really backbreaking. Um, all right, bit of a blank here. We can take fearful villager as a three drop. We've got only two three drop creatures we really care about. Daybreak combatants is not not that good. We'd play it, I guess, but fearful villager I think is a little bit better. So that's a little bit of an upgrade for us. Uh, Neville, Neville Gas Beguiler is not really playable. It's a five drop that doesn't really do anything. Uh, and Sure Strike is fine, but we already have one. So yeah, I think we take the Villager here. And now we're in, the, in a spot where we're starting to think about making some cuts. Easy Traveling Minister, I think. We want more early game creatures because early game creatures are good in general and also because we have Angelic Quartermaster, but also... Because Traveling Minister plus Heron of Hope is a whole lot of life gain, and you will have um, you'll have a real hard time beating that combination if you're an aggressive deck. So, um, and, and as I've said in some of my previous videos, the the two goals for any draft deck I think in this format are you want to be able to beat your opponents before they can cast their bombs, and or you want to be able to uh, beat aggro decks that are trying to beat opponents before they cast their bombs. So we can do one of those things really well with Traveling Minister Heron, and uh, and that is you know gaining life and, and beating the, uh, the aggro decks. Do we want to take Parish Blade Trainee here? We've got Daybreak about it. We've got a triple minister to pump stuff. I think we do. I don't think Ancestral Anger really fits in this deck because we don't have the Flame Breathers. So yeah, we'll rock it. It's also pretty good with, again, just Quartermaster. We want to have uh, early game stuff to do. Take Heron Bless, guys. I don't think we're going to play it. So this deck might also be good at attacking people down. That's one of the things I like about Red-White is that it does play both of those games pretty well. You can gain a lot of life with your Ministers and your Herons, and you can uh, beat people down pretty quickly with your Markov Waltzers and Alluring Suitors and 1s and 2s and stuff. So I'll take Brian Comer. We're not going to play it. It's off color. Take another Anger. So that's our second copy of Anger. Man. Well... I'm glad we didn't move in on the Flame Breather because we didn't end up seeing any, but I wish we... Uh, I, w I really want to get into that deck on uh, on camera because it's so sick. But uh, we'll rock this. I, I found myself ending up in white-red a fair bit for whatever reason, just because of the way the packs break. Um, but I think if you go back and look at that draft again, you'll you'll see that just 
the the black just wasn't there at all green wasn't there at all blue was there but blue just isn't very good unless you've got the right um shell to sort of maximize it so i think we ended up in a good spot here and just so oftentimes your decks are just going to kind of look like this they're just going to kind of be medium aggressive decks because you didn't open uh bomb rare and you just you know try to get as low to the ground as you can and or uh, be able to gain a bunch of life and i think this deck does both of those things pretty well so we just got a couple cuts to make here i'll be right back with those so I think the cuts are pretty straightforward with this deck. I think we cut the last copy of Anger and the Nurturing Presence as just cards that don't have very much synergy with the deck. Um, so th those are pretty easy. And then the last cut is could be a land. We're, we're, our curve is fairly low, but but not that low. We've got three cards that cost five mana. We've got three four drops, so I, I don't think it's a land. Uh, so from there, it's either one of our probably one of our three drop creatures, maybe a Ridge Wolf. Although the Ridge Wolves get better in multiples and we have the Villager to help pump them up. When this is a 3-2, it's it's really good. Uh, so it could be, could be the Trainee, it could be the Shield Basher. I think it's any one of those. Um, I'm going to cut the Shield Basher because it's a 4-drop and I like to have a low curve. And I think the more 2s and 3s we have access to, the better our Quartermaster is going to be. Uh, and like I said, I do find this card to be pretty vulnerable to Flame Blessed Bolt which is uh, not great. So I'm going to cut that card. I could see an argument for cutting a wolf or a trainee. Um, not really anything else. Uh, I guess combatants is actually something we could consider cutting. Uh, it's good with bystander, though, actually. Get, or, uh, sorry, trainee. Going uh, turn two trainee, turn three combatants, and immediately get to train this is actually pretty nice. Um, so we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see. That, that could be another one we want to cut. Um, all right, let's go to game one. And welcome to game one. We've got a nice looking hand here. One, two, removal spell, and a nice four drop. And we're on the play, so we're going to start with this. <clears throat> Opponents on red, unsurprisingly so. I think we want to attack here, because that is mainly what our deck is trying to do. So anytime we get damage in, that's good. And then we'll start gaining life later if... Uh, if we need to, um, you know, outrace them, which uh, we actually we uh, we actually might have to with the, the flame breather. But this the nice thing about minister is it's going to give us the third point of power to get through. And gaining life is is a nice uh, counter uh, to the flame breather strategy because they're trying to get you with chip damage. And if we just have incidental life gain, it makes it really hard um, because they don't have a ton of ways to just attack for pure damage. Um, so, unfortunately, we don't have a play that turn, but, oof, yeah, Bolt doesn't work there. That's going to be rough for us. As I said, they don't have a way to attack. Uh, okay, well, if we draw, oh, we don't have a Braid in our deck, so we can't draw that. Epicure. So, I think we just play Heron, gain two life, and swing for three. Uh, trading for the Suitor, I think, would be beneficial to us, since we've got we've got the air and we've got the, the life total advantage. Um, and I doubt they're going to want to make this trade, but I think if they did, we would be okay with it. But I, I think they want to get, they want to get going with their, um, their attacks. Really, they're going to trade. Okay. I, I mean, there's maybe a reason they want to do that, but, um, I mean, flipping this to a three, three and getting the extra two mana is, is pr a pretty massive tempo swing. So, um, and so here they missed a land drop. So I, I imagine they want to. Uh, maybe take that back. Uh, well, yeah, we're just going to curve out into Quartermaster here. It's going to be pretty nice. Uh, pump up Heron. And away we go. And, I mean, barring some kind of like unbelievable play on our opponent's side, I, I think we've kind of got this one wrapped up. Sharpshooter is no problem. Um... As <clears throat> so we've got bolt for that, I guess we'll play Epicure and see what's on top. Or sorry, I uh, get a blood token. I think this drew as a card. It definitely does not. Uh, okay, so let's pump up the Heron for lifelink purposes and swing with both. I think we just snap off the Sharpshooter. I guess if they have Flame Blast Bolt, then this kind of gets. It gets a little bit more interesting because they'll be able to kill Quartermaster, but 
Uh, I think we do just snap off the sharpshooter because I put some dead on board. And I mean, we're at 33. It, again, just with this amount of life gain, other aggressive decks, we really can't lose to, to people attacking us. So they're going to have to play something gross like a like a Dread Feast Demon or something that just really goes over the top to... Uh, or in, that, in the case of that deck, uh, an Avabrook Caretaker would have been a big problem for us potentially, but uh, there you go. That's round one. Okay, not so good of a hand uh, this this time around. I think we had a mulligan this as we cannot cast any of our spells and uh, our only white cards are five drops. So uh, I'm sad to mulligan it, but sometimes you got to do that. And this hand looks better. Um... I would like to keep Markov Walter, which means I'd like to keep all three of these lands. So I think that means we're putting Sure Strike back. It's the most conditional of the cards in our hand, uh, although it tends to be good in many situations. I think these three cards are a little bit better, and keeping a two lander is, I think, just a little too risky in this format. You really do want to hit your land drops, and you get pretty pretty badly punished if you don't, because the power level of cards that can be cast on you know, turns four and above. It can be really, really high from both players. <clears throat> so you want to make sure you're getting those out first. Okay. Uh, well, we could impulse here. I don't love that. I mean, if we hit a land, that's cool. We get to play it. If it's, if it's a red land, we get to play Bolt on their thing and we look like geniuses. If we hit a couple spells, we're going to be in a spot where we don't... Uh, necessarily get to cast our waltzer next turn which is a little awkward i think i can't imagine a card we want to cast next turn more than waltzer so i think we pass on the impulse for now uh, but i do think we kill the celebrant deprive them of the blood token get in for two start start beating down next turn we're going to be attacking for uh two plus three five uh damage uh, so i think i think we want to get the beats going here I erase them. So people are people are on the flame breathers. People are about those breathers, uh, which I I mean I love this card. This is my favorite card in the set right now. So I want to draft them, but I mean if we can't draft them, we have to beat them. And having three power is one of the ways to do that. It's like they might have alchemists retrieval. They had a blue up and their game paused uh, for a second. That could have just been declare blockers. I don't know. I'm just gonna keep an eye on that. Double breather. So this is where this gets really nasty because they don't ever have to attack us and, and they just get to deal us uh, damage, uh, you know, consistently. If they have an abrade, we could be in big trouble here. Um, we'll impulse first. Let's see what we hit. We are flooding out a little bit. Okay, so we have a last rate flash for next turn. Uh, we'll play the planes that we revealed. Pump up these guys. I think we attack with both. Uh, I think trading for a flame breather is okay with this Ridge Wolf. Okay, yep, fair enough. Yep, so here we go. Get, taking some damage here. At least we're going to get in for two. We get to replay the Wolf. That wasn't as bad. If they had a braid on Walter, we'd like be reaching for the concede button there, I think. <laughs> but uh, last three flesh is going to be not too bad. We're definitely going to kill a breather. The, th the other problem with breather is that like you have to use like your five mana removal spells on it uh if we get syncopated here that's gonna suck but if we don't then we get a blood token which will be real nice because we can uh pitch lands syncopate nice okay well we're not losing this race yet but now we don't have attacks with our wolf and we really did want that blood token so we'll just get in for two Maybe this Walter can go the distance. Uh, maybe not. Because this block flyers, right? Block only flyers. Oh, nice. Nice draw. Okay, cool. Uh, so we'll put the counters on, yeah, just our other two creatures, obviously. Uh, we'll play a land if they have syncopate for one. Oh, no, we didn't actually need to play that land. We could have um, could have paid for it anyways. <clears throat> okay, so Ridge Wolf still doesn't attack very well, but Walter does. So let's... Snap that off. And opponent's at six. We've got lethal. Uh, if we can get this thing out of the way. Diver scob. Real nice. Real nice one. Okay, so they're probably going to put Walter on top. That makes sense. Putting Quartermaster on top would not be great. 
And we'll definitely... Does this have haste? It does. Yeah, we'll put it on top then. Uh, put it on top, take action, yeah. Okay, so, I mean... Yeah, our opponent's got, the, got a good flame breather strat going here. But it, it's, we're looking as though we're, we're doing okay. Uh, so we get to attack with both of these because they want to block the Walter. They have to take four. And that's what they're going to do. All right. So we're almost there. I don't know. Can we make it happen? Maybe we need to have like double a braid here. Well, no, they just need to have one uh, removal spell for the Quartermaster. And then we're, uh, we're kind of at, at uh, ground zero. And we're, our sure strike's on the bottom. So we would need to find like a Blessed Bolt or a Lacerate Flesh. Uh, Rending Flame would just kill them because this is a spirit. It deals an extra two. So we've got outs if they do have that. And Daybreak Combatants doesn't give Trample, unfortunately. Uh, but I guess we'll cast it. Give our uh, give our Walter plus two. And then at least if they have a removal for Quartermaster, they're going to have to uh, <clears throat> uh, chump with the Wanderlight Spirit. Okay, they've got Chill. Nice. Okay, so Walter gets bigger. Uh, and there's no reason to attack with anything else. So this game's close, man. They could... They could definitely get there. But, uh, because cards like this just keep drawing them into more interaction, and meanwhile, they're, you know, getting us into, uh, uh, difficult territory with our life total. Let's see what they're able to find here. Okay, they're gonna draw three. It's very nice. They find a braid, I don't know, or, or another chill. They could get there. They land. It's too bad that thing's gone because now Rending Flame doesn't kill them because they don't have a spirit. A braid? Yep. All right, we're in trouble here. We are in trouble. This is the power of this deck. Ridge Wolf. Okay, that's looking pretty bad. <laughs> opponent got four cards in hand, so... Okay, well, it's got four power. Still doesn't matter. Yeah, they got good blocks with the Diver's Gob. Uh, Renning Flame would have been good there, though. Get the Scob out of the way, we can start attacking. And they're going to retrieve. Are they going to cradle of safety, deal us two? Oh my gosh, they might just have lethal here. Wow. I guess we're just going to die to uh, some cantrip spells, like ancestral angers and stuff. Weary prisoner, okay. Attacks. In with everything. Interesting. Makes me feel like they're just dead. Okay, they were just dead, but I mean, like, that was so close. Um, I'm sure they're a little bit miffed that they didn't get there, because I imagine, like, it wouldn't have taken much. Uh, they probably just, they probably had another spell in hand. They maybe just needed to hit, like, I don't know, in a braid or something. We might have just been dead, so. Um, close. Great deck, really close. We had a really good draw, so. Uh, good game. We are back. We're on the play. We got a couple twos and some removal. Love to see it in a deck like this. Probably going to start with the infantry. I think we'd prefer that to die in combat next turn. And uh, we'd have Bystander in play to gain us a life off of it. I think that's the right way to sequence that. The opponent's got an infantry. We've got a nice clean answer for that, though. And we're going to go ahead and just snap that off, because this thing gets real annoying when it comes back later. And uh, next turn we got a Heron of Hope, so just a nice little aggro curve out here for us. Opponent's on white, though, so we'll imagine that they can gain some life. <clears throat> so we're going to have to uh, probably fight through that. White-black, yeah, definitely going to be looking to gain some life over there. Kindly Ancestor, it's a good way to do that. Uh, yeah, we can't uh, 
can't really kill that. I mean, we could attack into it with infantry. If they block, we bolt it. And then we have our infantry in the graveyard to hook up our Heron of Hope with. But, I mean, two for one ing ourselves, I just don't... I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's worth it. <clears throat> Seems a little too aggressive against a deck that's uh, ostensibly going to be kind of controlling. We don't really want to run in, run ourselves out of cards. Okay, pan opponent goes for a panicked bystanders. That's a card we're pretty interested in bolting. Ooh, and a restless blood seeker is another one. They're going to get in with Ancestor. Uh, I mean, we would like to kill that. We could trade our infantry for it. It's what we were talking about doing last turn. Uh, but this time we don't have to trade also our Bolt for it. And we could potentially hold up Bolt and try to kill like their Bystander if they put it on there. So I think this is a worthwhile trade. We might be able to get a two-for-one out of this. I guess they get two blood tokens, though. This is pretty sweet for them, because they're going to get a life gain trigger here and a life gain trigger here. And I guess they could just transform this right away if they want. Oh, and they get transform the... Whoa. Right. Okay. Yep. Didn't, didn't, didn't think about this transforming. That's pretty bad. Uh, but they only get the one token, because it only triggers once per turn. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so maybe we didn't... Didn't want to make that block... Hmm. Forgot about this thing. Okay. Um, well, I mean, we're going to be gaining some life at some point. I think we just draw Skull Infantry and attack for four. But yeah, they could probably just... I mean, they could just snap a removal spell off here and we'd kind of be in trouble. Uh, the other option we had was to uh, just give this life link and swing and flip our own bystander. Might have been slightly better to do that, because if they bleed dry here, we're just going to probably be dead. Okay, they've got Heron. No problem. So we locked out a little bit there. I think I made a mistake by uh, committing hard to this Heron. In for three, we'll take it. Or will we? Yes, we will. All right. So kind of got a little bit lucky there, but now we're actually in, in a pretty good spot. So we're going to swing for four lifelink. Transform our bystander. And pass the turn back. So this is going to be a bit of a staring at each other type game because they're going to kindly ancestor their heron at some point and we're just going to be sort of uh, trading life totals for a little bit. I'm surprised they didn't do it there. Traveling mini. Okay, we can kill that. And we will. So that's really, inter uh, really annoying. I think they could have gotten an attack in with the uh, Cackling Culprit if they wanted. Yep. Oh, man, that's real good. All right, well, I think we're, we're in pretty big trouble this game, but let's kill this thing. Blood Tigger going to flip. And now we just need to find... Uh, I mean, we're not too worried about the, about the uh, Blood Soaked Reveler. We could find removal for it. We're gaining five life a turn. Um, oh, it still has that ability too. Yeah, okay, Rending Flame. Okay, so we either kill the Reveler or we kill the Heron. Uh, that's kind of a tough just decision. Uh, so this thing for five mana drains us and makes a blood. Alongside Gluttonous Guest, it also gives him infinite blood. Seems like we want to kill that. I mean, I want to kill the Heron, too, because it's it's so much... It represents so much potential life gain. And but, I mean, we also kind of want to try and get, get the two-for-one when they go for the Kindly Ancestor play as well. So it might be... Might be okay to wait. I mean, we get ourselves into a spot where, like, they can start generating some value before we actually do get to cast Rending Flame. It's like, how much do we, how much value do we want to give them um, before we just stop this engine? How bad is it for us if they do land the Ancestor on the Heron? 
it's just gonna it's just gonna elongate the game, um, which is kind of already happening if we let them have the blood soaked reveler. They get to. They get to like sack a blood potentially to filter, get a free blood, gain two life. I suppose we could wait. I mean, and also like if they put the ancestor on the heron, are we gonna rending flame the heron, or do we still just want to kill this reveler? I think we just want to kill this reveler. So that was a very long-winded way of figuring that out, but. I just feel like the longer this thing is in play, the the worse uh, everything is for us. So we're giving them a little bit of... We're conceding a little bit of value here because they get to play their ancestor on their heron if they want, and they can start gaining a bunch of life, but we're also gaining a bunch of life, and maybe we'll draw last rate flesh or whatever and just kill it that way. Okay, they're going to put on a culprit. That's pretty good, too. Uh, that's even better, actually, because they can... They can uh, Activate both. Uh, they can give Heron lifelink and already have culprit uh, with lifelink. Okay. And probably swing with both. Swing with all three. Yeah. Why not? Get in there. Love it. Okay. We'll just block here. They don't have mana to death touch, but they will gain a bunch of life. All right. Impulse for us is good. Try to find a last rate flesh. A couple lands. Okay. Well, those are two more lands we're not going to be drawing. All right. So... Uh, do we sit back here? Stops them from getting in with Griff Rider. Stops them from getting in with Heron, but it does not stop them from getting in with Culprit and giving it Death Touch and killing our cul Culprit. So we have to take three. If we swing, uh, they take five. Uh, they take four. We gain five up to 30. They swing back. This gets a counter. So that's three, six, eight. So we're trading four damage for three damage, but they're also going to gain a pile of life. Hmm. Yeah, I think we just I think we just have to sit back and just take our three for the time being. Having Heron on defense will uh, hopefully thwart their their game plan for a little bit until we can find another removal spell to deal with this culprit. Restless Bloodseeker. Yeah. I think it was correct to kill that. And now I'm kind of wondering whether or not it was. I mean, if, if they still had this in play, then our, we'd be in a similar situation, except they would just be generating value every turn. Now they actually have to, like, top deck something to to break through what we've got going on. So okay, they're not going to attack the culprit. Uh, that makes sense. All right, Kindly Ancestor for us. Not bad. We'll play it. We need to find... Hmm. We need a real game breaker here. We don't really have access to that in our deck, so I'm not sure how we're actually getting through any of this. Um, Walter is fine. Angel of uh, Angel Quartermaster would be okay. Stuff like that. Fortunately, we don't have a big rare in the deck to uh, to win in these types of spots. Um, but we're not, the opponent's not attacking with uh, the culprit, so that's good for us. Giving us some time to find something. Alluring Suitor. Yeah, we're going to cast it. If we swing with it and it transforms, uh, it could kill the 3-5. Because you can repeatedly activate this. It has trample. <clears throat> they have enough to put all three of their flyers in front of our Heron, but we could kill all three uh, with the Alluring Suitor's abilities, so... Uh, yeah, I think we'll hold on to this land for now. We might be making an attack next turn. <clears throat> and we'll have six... We'll have eight red mana if we want it uh, on the transformation of this, so that would be... Uh, four activations, so that would be six power. So if they did put the infantry and the gluttonous guest in front of us, we'd kill both of those as well. But then that puts infantry into the graveyard, which is problematic. We don't really want to do that. We could also just attack with Kindly Ancestor and Heron. Uh, 
feel like the longer this game goes on, the worse worse off we are. Yeah, they're they're they want to get that infantry into the graveyard. Okay, well now that they've attacked with it, it opens up suitor attacking. Do we even want to attack with suitor? That's almost better like to, to have this alive because we have so many activations. So I actually think we I actually think we don't want to do that. Uh, I think we get in with the, the Heron and the Ancestor and see what they do. Although that, that allows them to do all kinds of stuff to us. Maybe we get in with just the Culprit and the Ancestor. Transform, see what they want to do to the, with that. Their Culprit could trade with either one of our creatures. That's fine, because that thing is kind of gross. Aside from the culprit, they don't really have great blockers to, like, our ground creatures, theoretically. Okay, so I think we get in with, with uh, not the heron and not the suitor. But we will transform the suitor. And we will add two red. Let's see what our opponent does here. I think we got to try to break up this board stall a little bit. Okay, they're going to block kindly answers. They're going to block it. All right. So if I did my math correctly, we can uh, we can at least pump up the ancestor. They could have a removal spell or something here. That's fine. Not much we can do about that. So we need to do this one more time. So we'll still have Ridge Wolf mana. <clears throat> All right. Cool. Getting the trades going. So we got rid of their big their big beefer there. Uh so do we want to put this ancestor somewhere? Could put it on the our calculin culprit, we could put it on I kinda like putting it on the culprit. It's got five toughness. It's gonna make they're gonna have to put three creatures in front of it, and then we can pump it a bunch. Makes sense to do, I think. Put the Ridge Wolf into play. As a 2 2. <laughs> Yucky. But, I mean, it's close to having attacks. Uh, if it becomes a 3 2, then all of a sudden it's not, not the worst. Um, but I think the opponent attacking with the infantry there was uh, that opened us up to being able to do that, which is pretty cool. Hopefully they do that again. Actually, kind of forgot about the infantry. So, uh, okay, yeah. Okay, they're just coming in with it. All right, we're we're just gonna take three. I was thinking if I was thinking about the infantry, maybe I would have just put the. Uh, oh, they get, okay, they get to sacrifice it anyways. All right, that's good. We'll sack our wolf. Gain a life. Draw lands. Yikes. Um, now, this can be done on defense as well, eh? Okay, cool. Well, I don't think we have attacks. Unless we want to get in with the culprit. If they put the gargantua in front, then we trade. If they don't, then we have to trade Dancer for it or Heron for it on the retaliation swing. Neither of which seems great to me. So I think we just passed the turn. This is 30-30 uh, here. This is gonna be a. It's gonna be a long one. It's, it's either gonna go. Uh, they're either gonna get to overwhelm us with some kind of board presence, or they're gonna play something huge that we can't deal with, or we're going to uh, somehow be able to break through their uh, air force. Yep. <clears throat> And yeah, now it's five power. Very nice. Okay, so do we want to trade our heron for that heron? Not really. It's going to put us in a pretty tricky spot. Uh, we just have to draw. Yeah, and the Gargantua's coming in as well. But not the Griff Rider. Rider. 
funny. We're almost like, f we're almost okay just taking 10 because we've got, not that we're going to want to attack them back, but I think losing Heron here is, is losing the game. And we've got a lot of life to spare. So I think we're going to take 10 this turn and try to draw something. I mean, we could still hit, um, yeah, they're going to gain a pile of life. We could still hit, uh, Quartermaster makes our Heron big enough to block their Heron. Last Rate Flesh kills the Gargantua or kills the Minister and gives us a bunch of blood. I think we've got outs and we just need to... Yeah, there's one. Okay, so I actually think we... What's the library size? 21 to 19, so we're already behind there. I think we kill the Minister. And just get three blood. So otherwise we're killing Gargantua doesn't get us any blood. We're not really that afraid of that card right now. Killing Griff Rider lets us attack with our Heron, but they attack us back and they gain more life than we do. So yeah, I think it's Minister. Unfortunately, we're playing on defense here and we're we're not that kind of deck, but getting some blood means we can maybe draw some action here. Maybe we can find a Rending Flame or something. Get some of these lands out of here. Yeah, just all lands all day. Well, that's good. I'm glad we did it this way then, because we would have just been drawing blanks for the next three turns. <clears throat> sure Strike's a good one. So we can't threaten to kill their Heron this turn, but... Um, uh, yeah, maybe we should have waited to do all that stuff, actually. Because uh, we would like to have this up, but... We also wanted to try to find some action. So we might be taking a bunch of damage again this turn. If, if they were to come in with a Heron, uh, which they very well could just to try to gain life, yeah, they are going to do that. I mean, we could put Culprit and Dancer in front of the Gargantua. We could just take 10 or take 9 down to 11. That's not too bad. They're going to go up to, like, a lot of life. They're going to go up to 45. Because, they've again, if they have, like, Adam and Will... We're just uh, we're just gonna lose the game if we lose our heron. If we lose our dancer, um, it's not not horrible, but it's not good. Uh, yeah, I think we just take nine. Can't afford to can't afford to lose a, a creature here. We just drew three lands in a row, so our our, our deck will hopefully give us. Uh, some actual spells. And we've got like, we've got a ton of, of potential ungained life here. Okay, sure strike can deal with the scavenger if we need to. Oh man, okay. Well, we have no attacks. So we'll uh, pass it back. So it is frustrating to draw a bunch of lands, but the, the more re the reality of the situation is that their deck is very well, uh, very well positioned against our deck, and uh, there's not a ton we can do about that. It's just we just have to hope to sort of get there uh, in the early game, which we were unable to do, and that's that's really why we're in the situation. It's not really like poor luck. It just I mean it is in the sense that we did get there early, but uh, it's it's uh, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. It's not like, oh, I'm floating out. It's like, no, like we, we lost this game on like turn five or whatever. We, we just couldn't get through what they had going on. Okay, a lot of creatures coming into combat here. Probably should have played this land because we actually might need it. Um, okay, training. Yep. All right. So we would like to try to kill their Heron. We would like to try to kill Rot Tide Gargantua. We would, so we might need Sure Strike to win a combat. So I don't think we want to block Scavenger right here. I think we want to block Gluttonous Guest. That's uh, that's seven damage. I 
and we're going to be gaining a bunch of life. Uh, so we'll give our Heron plus one. If, uh, yeah, I'm really hoping to not see Adamant Will here. That would be, that would be pretty game breaking. <clears throat> okay, they're gonna give Life Link. That's fine. We're gonna give Life Link, and I think we just go for the Sheer Strike on the culprit. We're kind of just putting our cards on the table here. If they've got removal, we're going to be in big trouble. But we're already in big trouble. Looks like we're lucking out a little bit here. Okay, so that was a favorable exchange for us. Now we're ahead on board. So I like that. So now we just have to find a way to win the game. <laughs> uh, in short order. we got to gain some life. We can do that with Culprit. Uh, don't want to get in there with Dancer, I don't think. Probably don't want to get in there with Heron. Let's see. Heron represents 4 damage, 5 life to us. I, uh, But being able to block these things I think is pretty important. So I think we just get in with the Culprit. Too bad we can't get in with the Dancer as well, but we don't want to trade it off. This will, this will gain us a bunch of life anyways. So gain seven. Hit them for six. Oh, they're at 50, so like we've got a lot of ground to make up here, but... Let's see, what, what's left in our deck? Oh, we've already cast Rending Flame. I was, here I was thinking we had access to it. So we have another Last Rate Flesh. We still have Angelic Quartermaster. So I think the only removal spell we have access to now is Lacerate Flesh. Uh, Quartermaster would be good. And I think the rest of our deck is kind of just like two drops. I'm going to get in for two here. That's fine. Traveling Mini. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Culprit can trade for two creatures. It's not that exciting. Uh, if Heron gets in there, they get to attack us back for five. They only get to gain three. We get to gain... <laughs> so they take one damage. I guess we pump our hair in a bunch and gain a bunch of life that way. That might be worth it. We do need to get a clock going here. And they don't have a way to train the Griff Rider again. So I think I like it. I guess they could double block us. Maybe this was a mistake, actually. They could just double block. Okay, they're gonna let it happen. Cool with me. Yeah, I don't know if this was a good attack, actually. I was assuming they would not double block, but I mean, that's, that's a kind of a big assumption. So we're gonna gain eight. Put many into play. So we got great blocks on everything of theirs that doesn't have flying. <clears throat> They got a minister as well, okay. Here, hope gains life link. In we come for five, plus the scavenger. Trainee. That okay, so if we kill the trainee, then they get to put its counters on something. I think we still just kill it. It's only gonna get bigger if we don't. Where they put the counter? I guess on Heron. We could put it on Militia Rallier. I would let them train Griff Rider again, but they're probably just going to put it on Heron. Because then they can Traveling Minister the Heron and pump their Griff Rider. So, I think we're just kind of counting on drawing 
Last right flush, or we just take it. How much damage is this? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna gain seven, seven or eight life back anyways. And they're already, I can see them. I can see them thinking about uh, putting it on. I think we just take it now that I'm thinking about it. Next turn, it'll be, it'll be one extra. I think we just take it actually. This is such an intense, long game. Makes sense to me to take it, though. We've still got a lot of turns left to play, even though we're starting to dwindle a little bit on our library size. All right, nice draw. Uh, nice draw. Okay, so how can we maximize? I think we want to play this planes. We want to maximize our Deadly Dancer. So we, we only want to spend... Um, we want to spend two red, and we want to spend three white. Okay. <clears throat> and where do we want to put these counters? Probably on the culprit and the heron. Now we got... Uh, Kind of have blocks, except they're going to pump their Heron. So we don't really have blocks with the Quartermaster, but that's okay. We're gaining a boatload of life now. Give it lifelink. Get in there. Gain nine here. Plus the uh, the two we already gained off of the mini. So this is working. Opponent's going to blood. They're at 15 cards to our 12. So we're still pretty far behind in the, the race to decking ourselves. Okay, Heron's pumped, so we're not going to be able to block it. Trainee's going to get bigger. Unfortunately, now, it's, I almost wish we'd block the Trainee last turn because our Heron is uh, bigger than theirs because of Angelic Quartermaster. We could trade our Quartermaster for their Heron here. We also have that option. If we do that, they don't have a good spot to put those counters. They can put them on Griff Rider. Yeah, they're thinking about that right now. They can put them on Griff Rider, but that's not that good. We're just gaining so much life, though, that I, I think we can ignore the trainee. Okay, so opponent decided to not come with the Heron of Hope, which makes a lot of sense to me. I wish we just had, like, a 1-4 that could just block this. Um, but we don't. So this is uh, eight damage. I think we'll just take it. We got a ton of life. We're going to be gaining a bunch of life next turn. So the game almost feels like it's going to come down to uh, to decking more than life total stuff. All right, traveling minister in the house. Cackling culprits can almost attack. We've got double rallier. To block it, so that's not going to be great. So I think we're just doing the same thing we were doing before. At any point, our opponent could just draw bleed dry and probably just end the game that way too. You should probably keep that in mind. Um, do we want to get in with quartermaster or culprit? I mean, if we get in with culprit, we could kill both their militia ralliers, which potentially lets us attack with. Deadly Dance, but not really, because they've got 3-4 Trainee, they've got Diagraph Scavenger if they want to hold those back, so yeah, I guess that does make sense. If we get in with Quartermaster, let's them attack with Heron, which essentially negates the Quartermaster attack because they just gain back that life. So I think we just get in with the Heron, yeah. We would love to, we would love for that Heron to die at some point, because it's making their Minister really good. And all the rest of that. Okay, here we go. 
So much clicking. And their life total is extraordinarily high, but they were at 50. So uh, that's something. Okay, we're just getting bleed dried here. Don't slow roll me. We gain 10. Okay. Land. <clears throat> okay, opponent is, is uh, committed to not attacking with the Heron now. We can see that because they're pumping the Griff Rider. So our plan is working. They're not really gaining very much life. They are dealing us nine, but we're gaining that back. Oh, it's going to train again. Oh, dear. Okay, well, now we can actually just block it, right? Yeah, we just block it with Culprit now. So that's actually really good for us. And just get free blocks and get to gain a bunch of life. A weird situation where you don't want that to train. Okay. We're doing it here, guys. We're doing it. We just need to fade that bleed dry. No, it's in their deck somewhere. It's another frustrating thing about this format. You get into these situations where you're just like, yeah, if they have bleed dry in their deck, we're going to lose at some point, but you kind of want to like play it out, and then they just find it eventually. Because like, maybe they don't have it, and then, you know, that'd be cool. It's a lot of work to just for them to just draw it and kill you. In we go. Or Fierce Retribution would do it as well. But hey, it's been epic at least. You don't get to you don't get to have game states like this all that often. It's been some cool stuff that's happened. Whoever ends up winning this game. They're gonna need to find something pretty soon though. We got a couple turns before they're in they're in lethal range. The opponent's going to go ahead and pump their trainee. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, it's because it gets to train the rider. Okay, that's pretty sweet. All right. Uh, tempted to just take this. But, I mean, if they want to spend a combat trick to kill our culprit, we're also kind of okay with that because that means that it's a trick that would have killed one of our flying creatures. So I think we block here. Gain our five life, negate most of what just happened there. Draw full Darren Epicure, it's not the worst. Although it doesn't let us pump our thing. Uh, so we might want to wait on casting that actually. Shoot, I almost misclicked that. Okay, so we're gonna attack with Heron. We're hoping they're gonna eventually chump with their own. I don't think it's time to send the team in yet, as they do have a lot of blockers. Um, so I think we'll wait on the Epicure till we have like a land in hand that we know we wanna pitch. Because in the meantime, we could be dealing extra damage to them and gaining, gaining extra life. I, I guess this is still just an extra damage. But. It's all kind of, all roads lead to the same place. Is there at 14? All right. We're at 68. I think this is the highest life total I've had in this format. It's so funny. Okay, they're ripping some lands, which is nice for us. They were drawing some action for a long time. They were on five lands drawing pure action. So it's nice to see that balance out a little bit. Uh, they have a double block on our Heron if they want it now with Griff Rider having trained. So we do want to draw our last rate flesh pretty soon. That'd be pretty good. Uh, 
we got a pretty good shot at it. Only nine cards left. One of them we can cycle. Too bad it's not an instant. Or is it? No, it's a sorcery. Okay, pump Griffith. So they're going to attack. They can train the trainee. This is pretty cool. This little minister shenanigans they got going on here. They can just sort of like keep uh, chaining these up together, eh? Um, again, I think we just block here. Gain life. Trainee of our own. Yeah, baby. Uh, I'm pretty interested in just pitching that. So I think we'll do that. I don't think it does anything on this spot in this spot at all. Uh, as cute as it's been for them. Pitch. Last refresh. Ah, land. Love it. Okay. Well, this turn they gotta think about chumping with their heron, right? Seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen. So just not quite enough to force the issue. So again, I think we'll just get in with the heron. Looks like they're gonna block with theirs. They're getting ready to do that. And in we go. We gotta remember to give ours lifelink. Okay, uh, let's lifelink. <clears throat> Might as well just gain as much as we can. I think there's like maybe some kind of argument to uh, holding up like one activation. Maybe we hold up one activation because we could trade our quartermaster for their griff rider if we so if we've wanted to. We can hold up one. Because I mean, if our thing is not dying here, then um, it doesn't matter how gaining one life. I don't think matters a ton. So we'll hold up that activation to give ourselves that option if we want. We're at 84. <laughs> Crazy. Last turn. Still last right flesh in the deck, so we'll hold uh, planes. We still may want to cycle, even though we're getting pretty low on library size. Edgar Charmed Groom. Other vamps you control. Well, they don't have any other vamps. So this is a card we can ignore, and we will try our best to do that. Pumping Trainee. <clears throat> I'm not sure. I mean, they can pump training and attack us for six, but I don't think they want to attack with Griff Rider this turn. Man, we're so close. Let us have this one. Don't let them have Bleed Dry. If they come with Griff Rider, they are coming with Griff Rider. Do we trade Quartermaster for it? Like, if we lose our Heron, I still think we lose. So losing our Quartermaster doesn't really change anything. Or does it? I mean, we could draw Last Rate Flesh, get to kill our Griff Rider that way, and then Quartermaster might close the game out from there, but they're at 19. So this is like a seven-turn clock or something, so that'd be pretty hard to... Well, I guess uh, with Dancer, it's actually not... Uh, okay, so I guess we'll, I guess we'll let this go. It's just this is a kind of a point of no return, and we're not going to be able to have this trade again. But I think I think I think we let this happen. Uh, we're taking eleven here, which doesn't matter at all because we're at eighty-four. All right, and we'll take our turn. Daybreak combatants. I mean, yeah, that does a thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I like not blocking with the quartermaster there. I think we spread the love too with our our pump abilities. Let's 
Because I have no flyers now. So this is 5, this is 10. Uh, can we put another 9 on here somehow? No. Oh, maybe. This is 12. 13, 14, 15. Not quite. And they, they have enough blockers that they're, they're not dead on board. Okay, it looks like they don't have any effects, so we'll just stack everything on Heron. But in case they did have Fierce Retribution, uh, we would want to uh, sp spread the love there. Okay, so they're dead next turn. Um, so let's, let's, let's make it happen here, guys. We've been here for, I don't know, 40 minutes probably on this one game. So let's let's get the dub, okay? Let's get that dub. No bleed dries. Okay. And we're at six cards there, nine. No bleed dries, guys. No bleed dries. Come on. Come on. Hey, our opponent has decided to concede. Love it. So, I mean, that was a game that I think we should have lost. They made an attack that uh, we were able to benefit from. I'm not, I think it had something to do with the Deadly Dancer being able to activate on defense that they weren't uh, maybe sure about. So uh, we did get a little bit lucky there. We sort of fought through it, and uh, they didn't hit the removal that they needed to hit, assuming they had it in their deck. And we did get there, so that can happen sometimes. So there you go. Love it. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. We are back for round four after uh, a pretty epic one <laughs> that we were able to pull out. Uh, we're on the play. We've got a nice aggro curve here. One, two, three, plus a combat trick. Love to see it. And uh, let's, let's see if we can make it work. Being on the play is always a, always a big help. Opponent might have Bolt. Their turn passed a little bit slower than normal. So what happens when you play this game this much? You just turn, you just get turned to a freak about this stuff. Um, yeah, there's the pause. So imagine they'll bolt the infantry here. Okay, that makes sense. That's a real nice tempo play for them. Yeah, because then they get to go ahead and play a two. And I don't think we want to run a, a sure strike into this creature. There's a pretty good chance they block here because we have to cast sure strike. And we don't get to cast a Luring Suitor. Um, so even though it's a quote-unquote favorable... It's not even that favorable. It's two mana for two mana, one for one. But, um, you know, even though we don't lose our Minister, it's it's. I don't think it's worth making that bluff because uh, they're pretty likely to call and then we actually just lose a mana spent on the on the turn. So let's see what they want to do here. No play for them is, is nice to see. Uh, so we'd like to attack with... I guess Daybreak Combatants in Alluring Suitor. Yeah, and then we get free mana to cast Sure Strike if we want. So that, that, that all seems good to me. Um, put the plus two, plus two, plus two, plus oh on the Suitor, I would think. If they have a Braid, we kind of get rocked here. But I don't really think there's a world that we're pumping the Daybreak Combatants anyways because it just trades for the Ridge Wolf. Yeah, so I think we do want to... Uh, do want to pump the suitor because it's got trample and it's got three toughness. If they have witch's web or something, we've got sure strike to counter that. So it's really just a braid that's going to get us here. It appears as though they do not have that. So combatant's actually really good with the luring suitor. I didn't didn't think of that. Okay, here is the braid, I guess. Maybe. No. So, Witch's Web. It could be Wolf Strike. Which is not great here. Okay, we get our mana. Let's see if they want to block. They're going to block Combatants. I think we just let this trade happen. Uh, and I don't want to... I don't want to pump in case they have a trick. Because once we spend this mana... Like, if they play Witch's Web, then we play Sure Strike. And we get the two for one. And that's worth it. So I think we'll leave a little bit of damage on the table here. Okay, they have massive might. So they could still have web. Um, but, I mean, I think we go for this now. Try to get the two for one. I think if they had a braid, they would have used it already. Um, 
to stop the dancer from transforming, giving us extra mana. So, there you go. I think we read that situation just right. And if we draw a land here, opponent's going to be in trouble. So we are just going to snap off the removal spell in there, 4-4. Four, four. Get in for 6, and uh, we're feeling pretty good here. I don't know. We're out of cards, so they could play something pretty good. 3-3 three, three Magma Pummeler. That is good. Uh, remove that many 1-1 one, one counters. Deals that much damage. Yep. So they can block... Um... They can block something, but this has trample, and this is going to be a 4-4. Four, four. So how's that going to work? They're going to take 4 plus 1. Oh, so we're 1 damage short. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So they're going to go to 1, and they're going to get to kill both of our creatures. Ah, so we're 1 damage short. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh no, it's only eight damage. Uh, am I doing this wrong? Okay, yeah, so by my math, they would go to two. Um, and we don't want to lose both our creatures to that thing, so. I guess we're not attacking. That's pretty unfortunate. This is a spot where. Sigarda's imprisonment would be really good. But we've got time to draw things. Oof. Okay. Well, spoke a little too soon. Feeling feeling pretty good about our spot, but now it's uh, getting a little precarious. Uh, no no attacks. Makes sense. Okay, last rate flesh. So, um, do we get the blood token off of this? They still get to kill our dancer if they want. With the pummeler, so I don't think we don't think we want to use this. I just hope to find a creature with flying at some point, or for them to like make an attack that's uh, advantageous to us. Okay, they're coming in for six, and we're gonna take six. And I got a weaver. All right, yeah. All right, well. That's good. That's a good draw. Take that. Gain some life. But we still don't have good attacks through that magma pummeler, so we're going to be taking another six here. All right, so now, I mean, now we could potentially get them, right? We could lacerate the wolf, swing with everything. Uh, they could have removal. They're taking four. Four, five, six, seven down to three. We get to kill two of our things. It's still not good. Down to three, they get to kill two of our things. We still, so we're going to be left with like a combatant and a minister against a hunter. And they're going to be at three. And we're going to have Kindly Ancestor in the graveyard, presumably. Huh. I still don't like it. I don't think we can do it. I don't think it's time yet. And we already used our Sure Strike. Magma Pummeler, man. It's a good good card. Good little card. Alright, well we'll take another take another hit here. Try to find Heron. If we can find a Heron or a quartermaster or something, we can get back into this game, I think. Ridge Wolf. Ridge Wolf's not bad. Gives us a triple block.
a little bit risky though with them having three cards in hand. Hmm. Little bit risky. Could put the ancestor in front. Give ourselves the ability to gain some life. Uh, but I think if we're going to block, it should be a triple block. And if they don't have a trick, we lose two creatures. If they do have a trick, we probably just lose the game. Don't really like losing the game. Because uh, we can deal seven damage to that thing. So yeah, it's, it's not, not going to be great. I think we take another hit here. They have two combat tricks, so <laughs> we just die to that, but... Um, okay, okay, Mariner, yep. Flame Blessed Bolt. Okay. Well, we could Lacerate Bolt the Hunter. That flips it back to daytime. Which is useful... I mean, if they have a, again, if they have a combat trick, we're kind of in trouble, but flipping it back today is pretty good. Get the 6-4 off our back, or we just lacerate the 6-4. But then that doesn't make good use of our bolt. I mean, I guess we lacerate the 6-4, triple block the Flourishing Hunter. If they have, like, massive might... We still get to kill it. That's kind of an option. They must have some kind of combat trick, I think. So yeah, I think we go this direction. Force them to use their trick here. I guess the only awkward thing is like, is now we don't get to double spell this turn. Okay, they're gonna let that die. All right, well, we're going to pass the turn back. So now we have to triple block, but... Oh, no, 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 no. Stop passing, stop passing. I want to gain life. Should have gained life. Um, so now they've got exactly massive might, we... Uh, we at least get to kill this thing. Should have gained life, though, last turn. They have witches. Uh, witches, why, but I think we just... We just lose. Okay, they have Wolf Strike, so we'll still get them then. Spore Crawler. I would like to be able to bolt that, but we're gonna gotta bolt this thing. And they're gonna flip today now because they've cast two spells, so that's good. Sweet. All right. So not too bad, uh, but we're still in tr we're in big trouble still, because uh, now that all their creatures kill our stuff, uh, <laughs> so not not doing great here. That's magma pummelers did a ton of work for them. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll, we'll uh, hook up uh, deadly dancer. We're at six. We can go to seven. They still have lethal on us, uh, but we would get to block their weaver. So I think we'll do this and say go. Braid. Yeah, okay, that's going to do it. So, wow, we yeah, we just got rocked by a magma pummeler there, unfortunately. Wasn't expecting to see that one, and, and it certainly was excellent in that spot for them. So, potentially... Uh, an argument at some point for just attacking into it and getting two for one, but I don't think that would have worked out very well for us because they would have followed up with the 6-6. Six, six. Uh, so I think I think we were right to just try to wait to find a, a creature with flying, but um, I mean, we had an opportunity to put them to two, uh, so it's, it's possible that that might have been the move we needed to make to uh, keep the pressure on. It's just that we would have been like down to one creature. Uh, I don't know. Uh, they also got the dice temple play, being able to flame Blessed Bolt, our two drop, on their first uh, turn. So they had a couple of nice plays that game that were able to sort of swing it in their favor. And of course, Flourishing Hunter is just nuts against Agrodex. Um, but 
it was close. We had a few turns where if we'd drawn Quartermaster or Heron, we would have uh, would have had a good chance there. We we ripped a couple lands, unfortunately. That's the way it goes. All right, Wolf on two. This hand is okay. We, we've got stuff to do, but uh, we don't really need to draw any more lands. So that's the situation we're gonna kind of find ourselves in here. Uh, opponents got an instant of some kind. We'll see if it's a bolt or an abrade here. Uh, and we're just going to pass the turn because we don't have a three. Opponent goes to their third turn. No three drop for them. Another wolf for us. I think we'll cast it here. If it gets, if it gets siphon essence, then that's a little bit annoying, but they can't syncopate it. And they'll have to... Uh, Spend their removal spell on one of our wolves if they want to uh, not take damage this turn. Okay, they're going to take some damage. Yeah. All right. Well, a little bit afraid of what's going on over there, but so far they haven't done anything. So usually a good sign for aggressive decks. Uh, Whispering Wizard definitely dies to bolt. We could lacerate it. That spends all of our mana next turn and gives us two blood to cycle these lands away. But we also might draw something we want to cast. Man, four mana creatures with two toughness are just so tough in this format because of Bolt. Yeah, I, I can see that. Okay, so uh, there you go. Bolt is really good. Uh, I'll see you for the next. All right, uh, we are back for round six, I think. Opponent goes first. Uh, again, we got a nice little curve here. One into a two. Couple of removal spells. See what we can build off of. Ooh, and I should have played the minister here. My bad. Uh, clicked that a little too soon. I was thinking we've got flame blessed bolt, so we can kill their two drop, and we actually will get to. Uh, that's a little loose, but um, I think you. I think you're supposed to play the one drop there. Uh, but obviously, in in retrospect, that worked out really well for us. Uh, but if they don't play something on turn two, then we've just like wasted it. Wasted a mana. I don't know. I guess, I mean, there's arguments for both. It's a little bit riskier to do what I did. I didn't mean to do that, but ended up working out. Okay, uh, so here we'll bolt that farmer and get that out of here. And probably play Parrot's Blade Trainee just to be mana efficient. So next turn we can, like, play, I don't know, maybe we draw another Minister, but we wouldn't have white for it. Okay, we're definitely doing this. The question is whether or not we're playing Trainee or Double Spelling. My feeling is we're supposed to just play trainee because it's the most man efficient play, but there is maybe an argument for just double spelling there. <clears throat> so far, we're being able, been able to efficiently answer uh, both of our opponents' plays. And we have attacks here, even though they've got blocks. So that's not too bad. Uh, I guess it's Epicure. Do we want to blood away the planes? I mean, we do want to have... Four. We want to have five lands eventually for last right flush. So I think we're okay to just hit the land drop this turn. If we'd already played our land for the turn, it might make sense to do that. All right, so get get the trainee uh, pumped up here. They're gonna block. They're gonna take two, and we're gonna pass the turn back. See what uh, our opponent's got for us here. Okay, ill, temp Ill, Ill tempered loner. It's a pretty darn good one. Uh, so if we're gonna last right flesh that, we're gonna lose a creature of our own. But I mean, we, gosh, we kind of have to, right? Uh, of course, we don't actually have the mana to do that yet. So, all right. So I suppose we get in with bystander plus trainee. Make trainee a Three four. We trade the uh, if we trade bystander for loner, then they can shoot down uh, one of our one drops. I would presume they, they won't get to. I guess they could kill the trainee as well, but I think we do make this one attack here. Um, I think this is advantageous to us. 
But this card is really, really good. Like, just them getting just to even two for one us with this right now is, is pretty absurd. And then if this ever flips, it's a, I, I have one of the most insane turns I've ever had in this format. When, when I had a flipped uh, Ill Tempered Loner and opponent, I think the opponent attacked. Uh, in they they like they to send a bunch of creatures at me and I was like yeah this isn't gonna go so well for you <laughs> we got we got to uh, blow up pretty much their whole board because it triggers off of any one of your creatures getting damaged okay they are gonna kill the trainee so we get a couple of counters on the uh, epicure here which is not the worst uh, outcome but I mean this does hamper our game plan quite a bit they're gonna get uh, presumably they got ways to get that back. Um, this is just a really, really, really powerful card. And I, I do respect just blocking there because we're clearly pretty aggressive and they're on the back foot. Just slow our game down. They've got time to deploy their threats now. Whereas I think if you get greedy and like take the damage and try to flip this, you know, then you're, then you're at 12 and we find the removal spell or whatever, and then all of a sudden things get really, really awkward potentially. So I, I like just blocking there. And opponent looks like they want a blood here. Okay, opponent does blood. Discarding bleed dry, which is not great against our board, so that makes sense. Um, but... Boy, I mean, the rest of their hand must be really good. <laughs> so that makes me scared. They that that leads me to believe they've got a dread feast demon or uh, or like a tox roll or something. Casting courier bat is pretty good. Yeah, get that back. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a hard time winning this one, I think. Uh, all right. I don't think we blood away the last ray flesh. We're gonna need it. Uh, eventually, we will draw land at some point. Could send Epicure, they could double block. Uh, so for that reason, we should probably send Ridge Wolf as well. So that if they want to trade Courier Bat for Ridge Wolf, I think that's okay. So we'll send both. We need to get our, our licks in as best we can before this game gets too far out of reach. Okay, so they're just going to take four wisely I would say play another minister and still hoping to find the land to take down this loner it'll give us another blood token we're gonna lose our our epicure presumably so this is gonna be a tough tough game to win here another minister all right so let's say we make the Epicure a five power creature. Loner just jumps in front, takes down like a Ridge Wolf or whatever. They could double block. Bat, Gast again. So maybe we pump, put one, one power on the Epicure, one power on the Ridge Wolf and swing with both. So again, they, they either have to make the, the Courier Bat trade. They could absorb the Wolf with the Gluttonous Gast. Um, but they can't absorb the Epicure. Uh, if they wanted to trade, they would just block, uh, Loner. But we can't send Wolf in, uh, un, uh, augmented because they could just eat it with Loner and kill something else. So, yeah, I think this makes sense. But, I mean, obviously this game's going going pretty badly for us. But I don't think we can sit back because then, like, if this ever flips, we're just, like, really, really, really far behind. We'd like to just keep, keep their board under control. And we're going to have triple minister, which <laughs> means, like, we can... Any, any creature we have is going to be good. Going to be a threat to them. But uh, yeah, should be should be interesting. If we can pull this out, it's gonna be pretty sweet. Okay, opponent swings for two. We don't care about that. We're at 25. And wedding security. Well, we have an answer to that. We just need to draw a land. No, 
Markov Waltzer's not bad. So this can become a 5-5, five, five, draw them a card. And once it's a 5-5, five, five, we don't really have an answer to it, aside from just trying to race it. But we're actually doing a pretty reasonable job of that here. Gaining three a turn. And this does have haste, right? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Let's see if this is any good. And uh, I think our new plan is now to just try to mark off Walter them out. A little lacerate flesh on that courier bat. And we're, we put them to two. Could be good. <clears throat> they got a lot of looks, though, at uh, removal. Five cards in hand. Okay, Desperate Farmer in the house. That's that's a good one. That is a good one. And they also have the Abrade. Oh, boy. All right, well. Rending Flame. Hey, that's a card. We want to kill the 5-5 five five with it, right? We want to do it... Um, We, we, we want them to not attack with Desperate Farmer. <clears throat> so we don't want them to flip that. And we do have an answer to it, but we prefer it if, if it didn't flip. Um, it's not really going to be a way to make that happen, though. Because I'm not about to double block tra two Traveling Ministers on it. So they're... I mean, I think we just... I think we just gain as much life as we can here past the turn. Okay, in with all three. Yeah, makes sense. You may sack a blood token, they don't have any. Uh, so, I mean, we have to Rending Flame this 5-5. Five, five. There's no other way we can get around it, right? Unless, we're, unless our plan is to just ignore it, but I don't think we can do that at this point. We don't have any creatures that get past it. <laughs> so... We'll send that to its demise, so then we're going to take six. They get to gain four off this farmer, which we do have removal for. They got four cards in hand. Like, there's... I don't know. I don't see how we get out of this. we got to have some good stuff in there. Hopefully, just four lands. That'd be, that'd be pretty funny. No. Okay, Diagraph Scavenger. But, I mean, if we can take care of this Depraved Harvester, um, you know, maybe we find... If we find a good flyer, we can get back into this. Okay, well, we found our land at least, so that we can actually deal with this card. So let's do that. Get another blood. So now we don't have to draw any more lands if we don't want for a couple turns. Gain a couple life. <clears throat> oh, wait, 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 wait. I need to activate this minister. Break. Okay, we missed out a lot. Okay, bolts. It's fine. I think I missed out on a life last turn, too. I didn't didn't uh, tap all those, so... Don't at me, man. Forgot. Yep. Land we'll get rid of. Land we'll get rid of. And land we can't get rid of. Well, can't win them all, I guess, eh? So we're at 14. We're taking 6 to 8. And yeah, just kind of got got valued out by this, this loner. That's just, you know, and one of those cards that if you <laughs> you don't have the right answer for it, it's just going to just going to kill you. Um so we got one more turn to maybe draw something, but this one's probably over. <clears throat> so, I mean, if we had access to Bleed Dry, if we had access to... I mean, Imprisonment would be okay. Um, but... 
you know, it could still flip and then you're in trouble that way. But imprisonment would have been really good against that, for sure. So maybe we need to value that just a little bit more highly. So we're at seven. But, I mean, what did we take over it? I think we took a Luring Suitor, which that card won us a game pretty much by itself. So it's tough. It's tough. Okay, here comes Grizzly Ritual. So we're going to one. And that's probably going to do it. We can make a 3-3, but they've got uh, two in the air there. Um, we can gain two life, and then they just kill us anyways. Okay, so Ill Tempered Loner for the win. Uh, we'll see you for the next. And we're back. Hoping to hit a five-win run here if we can. Uh, we're going first, and yeah, it's, uh, it's an awkward one. Um, so we've got... And the ability to play a two drop that's not good by itself. And then we have three cards in our hand that we can't cast unless we find a mountain. Uh, so my inclination is to mulligan this hand. Especially because Voldaire and Epicure and Ridge Wolf get worse the later the game goes on. So if we do get stuck on white for a little bit, I just envision us having a, a one two in play for several turns, and then eventually we hit red and. We're playing a 1-1 one, one, and a 2-2. Two, two. It's not going to have a very big impact on the game. So I think we do want to mulligan. It's tough to mulligan on the play, but um, I think we have to do it here. And this hand looks pretty good. Uh, we've got two one drops and two three drops and three lands. We have both of our colors. So I think we keep the minister, the bolt, and the villager and put the combatants back. It's tempting to put a land back, but we do really want to hit our land drops, and I think that uh, Minister and Villager can actually sort of keep us in a game kind of by themselves, because the Menace on this is pretty nice, and being able to gain life is pretty nice with the Minister. Uh, I think we will attack for one here. Let's see if we get to use our Bolt on their turn. That'd be nice. Then we could play a Luring Suitor and go from there. Unfortunately not. Uh, so let's get in for one. Feels like they could have syncopate here. Um, but uh, luckily they do not. All right, cool. So if they don't have a, a creature, uh, if they have like a spore crawler or something this turn, then we just get to bolt it and swing and play, our, play an extra creature. Uh, so this could be a pretty explosive turn for us. So we can get a little bit lucky here. Oak shade, stalker. All right, so if we attack with both, Loring Shooter becomes a 3-3. Three, three. They can block the Minister. And we do not have a great response to that. I guess we could pump Minister twice and just trade. That's not bad. Uh, if they want to trade with the Suitor... Um, that's not bad either. I guess three it's three three mana card for three mana card. Uh, the tree for the suitor. We've got six mana, so we could cast. Uh, we don't really have a good use for that that mana. I guess we would pump the minister and then just play fearful villager. It's a little bit aggressive. Could also just pump a luring suitor and swing. They could trade if they want. And we can just play Villager. That might be the best move. Don't really think it's good to lose our Minister here. And I, I, I don't really want to play Reckless Impulse this turn because we're not going to be able to cast the spells that we get with it. Uh, or we just wait. Um, play Villager. Get to attack with, you know, maybe Villager and something and, and keep the Suitor back. Maybe we attack with Minister and Villager. Maybe that's just the safest play. Oh, we are running out of time. This is kind of a tricky decision. Uh, I'm gonna go with not attacking. I, ca I can't really, I can't really figure out a line that uh, makes a lot of sense. That doesn't put us in a spot where it feels kind of awkward. But yeah, all right, that's a big creature. Big old creature. All right, so we have four red. We could swing with both of these. Uh, they can put, still put the Oakshade Stalker in front of the Alluring Suitor. 
and we can kill it that way uh, without even spending any mana if we wanted to uh, pump it with Minister. Flips. If they don't um, force us to pump anything, we could just play Reckless Impulse. We could play Reckless Impulse anyways, actually, just see what we hit. See what we hit. Uh, kind of like that, maybe, to start. Maybe we'll just start there. Rending Flame. Rending Flame is good. Rending Flame is good. So that, that lets us just kill Hookhand Mariner and swing for three. Maybe that, that might be the safest move. Try to keep our Alluring Suitor alive. I think it's got some love to give to us. And, uh, yeah, next turn we can still do the flip if we want. I'd really like to find Sure Strike. That would make me feel so good about attacking here. Just don't like... Uh, yeah, I just don't like one-for-one-ing creatures with, uh, with good late-game application against the deck that ostensibly wants us to go to the late-game. Okay, Weaver Blossoms is in the house, so we can still pressure... With the villager, uh, they could double block. We could kill the stalker at that point, and then that sets us up to potentially flip suitor next turn. <clears throat> so I think I like that move. I'd, I'd rather trade villager for for stalker than uh, suitor. That's for sure. They're gonna double it up here. I mean, if there's a combat trick in hand, I'm even more thankful to not have attacked with the suitor, I think. I'm thinking about it. We could have sure strike. That'd be bad for them. Okay, they've committed to the double block. Let's put the stalker in front here. So it looks like no combat trick. One for one trade, not the worst. Hopefully we'll be able to flip the suitor next turn. And uh, let's pass it back. But, uh, I mean, yeah, this deck's pretty weak to uh, big green monsters. Unless we have our, our, our Heron and our, our Quartermaster, which, hey, they're still in the deck. We could draw them. <clears throat> and we got a four-power Ridge Wolf as well. So, like, if, if, if we don't feel like we can swing with the suitor... Uh, the Ridge Wolf can still potentially get in. It's threatening this Weaver. All right, opponent plays Honored Heirloom. So they, 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 we have to assume that they have um, the six mana six six in their hand uh, if they're making this play because they they're missing their their land drop presumably, and they want to cast that card next turn. So uh, card's pretty hard for us to beat. Ooh, Biolume Egg. Okay, well, we're going to get to Transform and potentially kill this egg, actually. Uh, they probably just don't block with it, but... We're going to have to deal with that 6-6 six, six at some point, and that's going to be rough times. So I think we put uh, a power, an extra power, point power on each of these creatures, swing with both, and go from there. Ooh, Ridge Wolf will help us do that. So now they won't block with the egg, but that's okay. And I think we just put the two red and our two red into just getting more damage uh, through. I think it's fairly unlikely that they're going to play something and we're going to be like, man, I wish we could bolt that right now. I think we can just untap and bolt it next turn. They go to three here. So, I mean, yeah, if they play the 6-6, six, six, we're, we're going to have a potentially hard time. They're going to gain four. Up to seven. Okay, Diver Scob. Yeah, that's really good, too. Okay, so they're going to probably put the Dancer on top. Uh, but they didn't get any life, so maybe we can get them, actually. Uh, put on top. I think so, because we can still flip it and get mana. So they're going to have a 4-4. Four, four. 
We're going to have four creatures. We're going to attack with both wolves. Flip dancer. They're going to have to block with things. Yeah, I think we will put the, put the dancer on top. And they, these have trample as well. <clears throat> um, okay, so if we make the wolves four power each, and then we can pump one of them additionally, two of them additionally with the suitor. So do we just put it all into one wolf? I guess it doesn't really matter because trample is trample. So I guess we'll split it up. They're going to have to put something in front of these. And actually, we might be able to, to sneakily get them with Flame Blessed Bolt. We should keep that in mind. Because if we deal two, if they block with the Weaver and we deal, deal two to it, then we get extra trample damage going off. So actually, we, we really want to make sure that we consider doing that. Gonna, yeah, okay, wisely going to, uh, to double block. So I don't think we can do this now, but we definitely want that Serpent to die. So we'll put that first. Okay, so if we pump this to five and then bolt, they go to one. So that's not worth it. Um, we only pump one thing. Definitely pumping this one. So we have to kill both of these big creatures uh, with two mana left over. So unfortunately it does not check out. We can't uh, bolt. Uh, or do anything. If we pump, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, okay, so we'll just let this happen. It might have been a world where we just want the Weaver to die, but it gives them outs to casting more stuff. But I don't know, that Bioloom Serpent's pretty gross. Okay, well, they played around Bolt, which is very smart of them. Would have been tempting to just try to try to keep one, uh, uh, you know, the four four alive or whatever. Spore crawler, we have an answer to. Probably just fire it off right here. Could get syncopated. This gives us uh, plus one plus. Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll wait till our turn. Don't want to get syncopated. Wolf strike. Nice. Darn. Okay. Uh, well, there wasn't really a good way to play around that particular card. <clears throat> because uh, if, if we send, they just block with Spore Crawler. I guess we give Trample and Pump. Maybe we... Well, then, but then they kill it. Yeah, so no, we wouldn't have been able to... That wouldn't have worked out. Okay, Epicure, nice. Deal him a damage. Blood away this planes we don't need. Although, if we draw Quartermaster, we will need it. But I think it's fine to blood it away. That'll make sure that we do draw the Quartermaster. It's one of the best cards in our deck, so... Okay, just the planes. Just the planes this time. Okay, they're two. And they're out of cards, finally, so... Let's see if we can hit something here. Uh, is this a spirit? It is. So, Rending Flame, which we still have in our deck? No, we spent it already. What do we kill with this? Uh, oh yeah, we killed the, uh, the Mariner maybe, or the, yeah, maybe we killed the Mariner with it. In for three, sure. So we're going to attack them with our Epicure this turn. Oh, no we're not, because they've got a three, four, rats. 
And that foreboding statue is going to forebode. We still have um, rending. No, um, five mana deal four, get blood. So I think we'll keep the planes in hand. <clears throat> Just give us a heron. Give us a heron. Give us a... Um, give us a quartermaster. That's what we want here. In for three, shrink the Epicure. No blocks. I mean, Rending Flame would still be good, or whatever that other card's called. This hurts my psyche. Okay, let's pass it back. Okay, if I'm gonna exile some stuff, it doesn't really affect us if they do. Rending flame. Yeah, I guess we killed the hook hand mariner with it. Oh jeez. Alright. Um, yeah. No search, though. They're gonna make a couple of bugs. Or they're gonna make a 2-2 two -two bug. 3-3 three -three bug, okay. Jeez. Well, you can't say this game wasn't close, okay? I can't help it if they have a bomb in their deck. Uh, yeah, I'll just gain a couple life. So, lost to the loner. I mean, we're not losing to the shaman in specifically, but we are kind of losing to the shaman. So we're going to get to make another bug-o. So close. So close. Yep. Get it. Coming in for eight. Yeah, lots of blockers back. I would leave a few back there because you never know what we could could draw. Draw sure strike. Maybe get out, get you out of nowhere. Attack with one more thing. Maybe just one. I would send one more, I think. <laughs> the opponent is sending one more, so if we draw a sure strike, we might win. This card is very good. Oh, it's only when it attacks. So sorry, I thought it was ETB as well. So this is 10 damage down to 15. All right, well... They've got uh, they've got enough mana to make a bug, so uh, yeah, sure strike doesn't even do it at this point. Oh, and they've got a, they've got a, still got all these, eh? Okay. Mm. Well, I don't know. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments if we missed uh, something here. Um, they did tap the werewolf, so we could swing with everything and deal them one. <laughs> Man, the hasty guys would have done it. The 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 three the three mana two two plus two plus zero oh, haste. They would we would have killed them with that. We put them to one. We almost certainly die on the retaliation. Oh. Um, Panic Bystander would transform. So we would go to 17. Hmm. 
Uh, so three, six, nine, ten, uh, twelve, fifteen. I'm gonna have to block. Probably just dead. I don't know. I think we get in with everything. See if they see if they misclick. <laughs> Man, that was close. I mean, we had to have missed. There had to be a situation where we could have gotten one damage in, right? Let me know in the comments if you see where we missed it on this one. This one, this game was just right down the wire. Even if we had a second Epicure in the deck, we could just kill them with that. Okay, opponent makes bug. Makes bug. So if we can not, if they swing with everything and we can, we can not die somehow, uh, then the hasty three drop is still an option for us. But I think this is just too much damage here. Holy moly. Okay. That was a lot of milled stuff. Sure strike. And yeah, we still got the hasty two, two. Okay, so let's say we put this here. This is three, six, nine, twelve. So that's too much. If we put this here, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Yeah. So we're we're unfortunately just dead. But man, that was a close game. Epic. Uh, so I mean, if they didn't have Hive Heart Shaman, there's a chance that we would have got there. But of course, you can't uh, can't be too mad about losing the rares in this set. It's just the way the way the set is built. So, you know, 4-3 record, pretty happy with that. Um, red is a consistent color, comes together well. The deck performed pretty well. We didn't have too many awkward hands. We had a couple mulligans we had to, had to take, which uh, is part of the game. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think I don't think I would have changed anything here. Um, deck, was, deck was pretty solid, did, did its thing. Uh, and, you know, you want to open the good rares when you can. Uh, unfortunately, we did not. Uh, you want to draft, you know, red-based, uh, either, like, red-black kind of blood stuff or, like, Kessig Flame Breather spells kind of stuff. We weren't able to draft that either. So I think, you know, pretty good outcome. Positive win rate with the deck. Um, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And uh, do give us a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're uh, into what we're doing here. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, as always, for watching. And we will see you very soon for the next video here. Um, we'll talk to you very soon. Bye for now.